Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to read an email that came in from a viewer that I think is very much so related to the core topic of this channel. I'm a huge fan of your channel, FUTO, and everything you stand for. Yesterday, Amazon had the majority of their third layoffs, and on the same day decided to discontinue the Amazon Halo product. This is a fitness slash health wearable. Not only are they discontinuing the product, they are shutting down the service on July 31st, 2023, including the app and cloud connectivity. All health data will also be deleted in August. For reference, this product was still being sold by Amazon and is still listed for sale at retailers like Target, link below. Just my commentary here, that link actually did work until about a day after I received this email. So at the same time that Amazon was announcing that this product would no longer work in three months, you could actually purchase a new one on Target.com. Great going, Amazon. In an email Amazon sent out yesterday about the service, they mentioned you can send them your Halo device for recycling. So customers who are buying a Halo device today at Target or last week at Amazon should recycle their brand new wearable immediately. So literally, Amazon manufactured garbage that is still being sold right now. As a company that preaches sustainability, it's very interesting how they are going about this. I understand discontinuing a product that isn't selling, but ending support three months after the email goes out while the device is still being sold? Surely a company as large as Amazon could afford to support their own product for at least one year and offer some sort of long-term use, like Sonos did by creating a separate app for older projects that wouldn't get future updates. It is unclear how the device will operate without connecting to the app or Amazon servers, or if it will operate at all. You were the first person I thought of when I heard about this. For one, big tech and their do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do attitude. Two, is sustainability just a buzzword for big tech until it hurts their bottom line? Yes. And three, right to repair efforts coinciding with the ability to use devices long term. This is another example of how you don't actually own anything. Would love to see a video of your perspective on this, but no pressure. If you do make a video, please don't identify me as my current employer wouldn't be happy. Thanks for all you do. Redacted. So yes, this is an Amazon blog post about their decision to wind down the Amazon Halo. The Amazon Halo is one of these little fitness things, and uh, the thing is, it's, it's not going to work in about three months. Many of the features and functionality of these products are not going to work. And it seems like you get a lot from a, you know, a sleep tracker, you get a smart alarm clock, you get a smart watch. And honest, again, me, you can call me a Luddite. I don't want any of this smart shit. I don't want, I, I want an alarm clock with the red blinking numbers when the, when the nine volt battery falls out the bottom. Or I want an alarm clock that is the basic app on my phone. I want a watch to be a watch. I want a fitness track. I, I, I don't want the cloud connected fitness tracker, because the problem with so many of these devices that are cloud connected is that the manufacturer can turn them off or turn functionality off when they want and you are screwed. This is the same criticism I had with the ring system. There was a certain feature in the ring system that used to be a feature and was advertised as a feature that you got when you purchased the product. Now you need to pay a subscription fee to have that feature. Now you may think, well, why don't you just take the product and have it connect to your own system? You can't. That's the whole point. Like when, when I buy a $50 IP camera, I can choose back in the day to have that camera connect to my NVR, connect to the manufacturer's NVR, connect to a cloud NVR. I can put the credentials in it. I choose the server, the port, the username, password, protocol, all of that. But with more and more modern equipment, whether we're talking about the Ring doorbell or Arlo cameras, we have more and more devices nowadays where when you purchase it, you are stuck using the manufacturer's cloud services for everything. And if they choose to turn it off, you no longer have a functional device. And this is a serious, serious problem. One of the things that I was discussing with this fellowship program that we have at the company that I'm currently employed at, Futo, is that we are trying to pay people to come here and create software that follows four very basic, simple principles. Behind door number one, it is open source. Behind door number two, you can self-manage it. That means that you can either run that software on the company systems, or you can spin up your own instance in a co-location facility or in a laptop that's in a closet in your basement if you want. So you can always run that software as you see fit in your own facility. Behind door number three, if you're dealing with social media, it must have a sovereign identity system. And number four, above all, most importantly, it cannot suck. 
and it seems like many people like what we were able to produce with this fellow over here who came here for three months to create this caption software who's now working on an Android version of it. This software is beautiful. It doesn't actually connect to the internet to do any of its voice to text functionality. So unlike Google where your recordings get saved for over 10 years even if you didn't consent to it, here you have a piece of voice to text software that literally does not even have to connect to the internet to do its job and you can self-manage it on your own system. This is the direction that many of these things need to move in. Now, Amazon, I know a lot of people are going to say that stands for Amazon. Look, they're refunding you if you bought it in the last 12 months. You have nothing to complain about. What if I built my, my routine around something that I can no longer use? This is annoying. This is why so much of this cloud crap is annoying. I want stuff and call me crazy. You can call me a Luddite. You can say I'm getting old. I don't understand technology. I want my shit to last longer than a year. If I buy something, if I get something involved in my day-to-day -day routine and I learn a new system and I get it involved in my life, I want it to last longer than a year. I don't want to have to give it up even if I'm getting my money back. And again, many people, do you understand, are not getting their money back. If you bought this item 13 months ago because you thought it was cool, if you bought into their ecosystem, you are now screwed. 12 months ago, you get a refund. 13 months ago, eh, F you. That's the way this works over here. And when it comes to losing weight, I'll do it the old fashioned way. Over here, I was about 189 pounds. And over here, I was actually able to lift more weight than I could in that one. And I weigh about 156 pounds. And I even, uh, the pinned comment here is actually my, my weightlifting routine <laughs> that I put here. My fitness tracking, get ready. Notes application. So a text editor, a scale, a mirror, and a schedule. Let me say that again. A text editing application. To put my to write down what I did, put my progress, how I felt, a scale, a mirror, and a schedule so that I go and I go to the gym, but I also eat on a regular schedule. That's it. I lost over 30 pounds in a few months and got into better shape with a basic, old fashioned, non cloud connected system. And I'm proud to do it. And hopefully, I won't ever get that fat again, so I never have to do it again. My God. This actually looks like that emoji that Elon Musk was using on Bill Gates. Like, I don't, oh, never let yourself get to that point. But anyway, in all seriousness here, there is a serious problem with consumers buying this stuff not, and not realizing it. And honestly, here's the thing. I hope this happens more often. I hope that Amazon takes features and functionality of a security system that you put into your home and twists the knife and makes it subscription only. I hope companies that promise that you would have all of these features and functionality available for the lifetime of you having the security camera decide, never mind, you got to buy a new one in order for that to work. I hope that they turn off your fitness tracker because this is the only way that you are going to wake up your normal average tech consumer to the fact that they're getting screwed and get them to ask the question when they buy the product. Does this have to connect to your servers in order for it to work? Because people are not going to change the way they purchase things. They are not going to start demanding this of these companies until they get burned. They need to be burned. They need to get burned and have it feel bad before this stuff starts to go away. And I want to see this stuff go away. And I'm happy that the company that I work at is putting in a decent amount of effort and putting their money where their mouth is to try and stop that stuff and try to encourage people to develop software that doesn't do this. If you think that this fellowship program is at all of interest to you, you're welcome to check out the page and apply over here. And you know, Know, maybe you get in, maybe you don't. Now, what do you have to lose by sending an email? Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. Let me know what you think down below. Would you like to pay uh, all this money for a fitness tracker that connects to the company servers that they can turn off at any given time and turn into garbage where you're at the their mercy as to whether or not you're going to get a refund on the device that they've literally bricked? Or do you like doing it the old-fashioned way, which is, you know, again, from 188 to 156, from pretty much notepad, scale, mirror, schedule. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, before we end the video, check this out. I'm actually starting to learn how a lot of this stuff works. I have not caught up to Linus by any stretch of the imagination, but check this out. We got all different types of, uh, we got we got t-shirts, we got mugs. We're making fun of uh, a, a certain you-know-who company because they lost in the state of Colorado. Uh, we have a dealership tiers mug over here. We've got, uh, you know, support right to repair. You'll own everything and they'll be pissed. It's not lying. It's commercial real estate. So do check it out down below. Bit.ly slash Rossman store. That's bit.ly slash Rossman store. Spelled with two S's and two N's. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.